Are you an established small business owner or aspiring entrepreneur? Would you like professional advice to help your business grow and succeed? Well, look no further. The Virgin Islands Small Business Development Center is the territory's number one resource to move your business forward. Enjoy low-cost advising, low-cost training, and technical assistance from experts in both the public and private sectors. The BISBDC is nationally accredited and sustained by the University of the Virgin Islands and the U.S. Small Business Administration. Visit us at our locations on St. Thomas, St. John's, or St. Boyd, and follow us on social media at BISBDC. For easy access to all our training and networking events, be sure to join our newsletter and download the BISBDC app. The Virgin Islands Small Business Development Center here to help your business start, grow, and grow. Good morning, everyone. Sorry about those technical challenges there. Uh, welcome to the VISBDC Financial Literacy Series, Understanding Personal and Business Credit. The VISBDC is happy to celebrate April as Financial Literacy Month and wants to prepare entrepreneurs, potential business owners, and consumers in general with the necessary tools for surviving and thriving in today's financial scene. It is imperative to understand how things work in the financial world. Today's session will focus on understanding personal and business credit. Allow me to introduce today's presenter, Mr. Andres Amaro. Mr. Andres Andy Amaro is a seasoned professional with over 30 years of experience in the financial services industry. He has extensive knowledge in the commercial banking, mortgage banking, and compliance slash regulatory sectors. Andy is currently a business relationship manager in the commercial lending division at First Bank. In this role, he is responsible for overall development and sales and risk management of, of commercial banking relationships. Andy is also very community oriented and often facilitates the Understanding Your Mortgage Seminar which is provided as part of the first time home buyers counseling session facilitated by the VI Housing Authority. Here's a friendly reminder to put your questions in the chat and they will be addressed by the presenting team either in the chat or later during the question and answer segment. A copy of the presentation is available upon request to training at visbdc.org. We encourage you to take a few minutes after this training to fill out the surveys that lets us know how we are doing. Instructor Amaro, the floor is yours. Okay, good evening. Good, good evening. Let me see who's ready to start a weekend. Good morning. Good day to everyone. Can you hear me? Can everyone hear me? Yes. Yes, Excellent. I can hear you. Excellent. Okay, and, and you can see the slides, Every everything is uh, uh, comfortable here, right? We don't see the slides as yet. No, we can't see the slides. Oh, okay, let me, let me, um, let me, let me share this. I thought I was sharing already. Uh, back on this slide. Can you see it now? Not yet. 
Oh boy. I'm jumping in here. Yeah, um, No, I'm not see on the side. I'm not seeing here. Swap duplicate side. So forgive me here, yeah. but I'm not seeing the. Okay, let me start from here. Slide show from beginning. Uh, and then share. Yeah, I, I'm not seeing the share the share thingy here, so I could share with the audience. Um, um, Christy, can you can you help me here? Can you come down and help yeah. me here? One please? second, one second. I'm gonna I'm yeah. gonna share it. Yeah, I'm gonna share it. Okay. Can everyone see it? Hello? I'm seeing it. Okay. Yes, we can see it. Okay. Oh, okay, great. Full screen? Yes. Good. Okay. Sorry about that uh, rough start there and getting started on understanding personal and business credit. Hi, my name is Andy Amaro and I work for First Bank. Uh, as was mentioned earlier, I have about 30 years plus experience in compliance, uh, regulatory law, uh, uh, residential lending, and, and now my latest stint is in the commercial lending area. And um, I'm so happy to be invited to kind of uh, give a little understanding on the credit process and what institutions look for as uh, 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 their, their qualifications for uh, eligibility for both personal and business customers. And um, so how I'm going to do this today is, is I'm, I'm going to give you, uh, I'm going to talk a little bit, a brief summary on what credit is. Uh, uh, the 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 characteristics of credit, the five C's of credit. Uh, talk a little bit about the the agencies that store all this information and where we look to for this information, and then we'll dive right into the presentation and uh drive through it. Okay, and then I look forward to your questions uh going forward. So credit important on both aspects, personal business side. It's important very important in our personal lives uh one, one of one of the ways we can look at at the way banks look at credit and credit reports first of all what is credit right credit is is like a trust it's 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 a trust that someone lends you money personal property or something of value and that they trust that at some point in the future 
you will return that favor, you will return that money sometimes for, 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 for additional income or additional services. But the core of credit is about trust on the personal side and the business side. And so we need to understand that when we when 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 institutions are reviewing and analyzing uh, credit reports, this is when when we're analyzing business reports, uh, uh, this is a characteristic we're looking for trust. So so let's start there. The five C's of credit. We have character. We have capacity, we have capital, we have collateral, and we have condition. And uh, one of the important aspects is character, right? Are you going to pay me back? I know just from growing up and li uh, living long enough, if someone is to, if someone is, if someone is to, I am to lend someone money, and uh, they come back and they pay me back as promised, I begin to develop a relationship with that person and a trust with that person to the point to myself, I start to say, well, wow, you could lend, you could borrow money from me anytime because I trust or I know based on your pattern that you will pay me back. So I have no issues there. And that's what a credit report is all about right? It is kind of detailing your character and your, your, your instinct to pay in your debt, your willingness to pay in your debt. And when you hear that all uh, institutions, we, whether it's business or whether it's, it's, it's personal credit, and we go to a credit report and we're looking for a score, because the score tell us based uh, on a range, it's usually between 300 to 800, the higher the score tells us about your character and your willingness to pay your debts. And that's the most important aspect of, of, of credit review because it's really up to you to pay back your loan. Then we move into capital um, or, or capacity before we get to capital, which is basically your cash flow, your ability to pay. Well, we can't lend money or institutions can't lend money until we look at what your ability to pay is, whether that's your uh, uh, personal salary or whether, whether that's your business income. There has to be a cash flow. You have to understand the importance of making sure you have good cash flow. So, you know, if you're just starting out and you want to get into this type of business, one of the characteristics you need to continue to build is your cash flow. Uh, uh, that, that means, you know, you, you have a job, maybe you get some education to get a higher job, a higher salary, or you have a business and you start to uh, uh, work with your business to find avenues for more cash flow. The stronger your cash flow is, the stronger your ability to pay, which is always in the good uh, 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 sites of an institution. And then you have your capital, which we also call like your reserves. What's, what's your safety net? On the personal side, you want to make sure you begin to build your savings account, have monies there for emergencies, for stability. These are all areas institutions would look at to kind of build a strong credit request for yourself. So that's collateral, that's capacity, your ability to pay, and then that's 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 your that that that's capital, your reserves, your savings, your operational account on your biz on, on your business side. Then you have your collateral. Get some more little uh uh on the on the on the institution side. We're going to look at what's called your collateral or your security. What are you putting up to to assure an institution that you mean business look i am telling you i'm going to pay you back and as a as a as an addition to my promise i am giving you this collateral in 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 terms of a mortgage i am holding the lending institution is holding your house as a promise for you to continue to pay on the business side it could be your assets it could be money it could be 
uh, real estate. It could be several things. But your collateral also is something that you want to be knowledgeable about, ensuring it's sound and of good value to the bank. And then the last C is the, is the condition. We also look at condition. In today's environment, as you know, we're under inflation. Uh, rates are going up. That's not necessarily a buyer's market, right? That's more a seller's market because the rates are going up. So if you have the term, and it all depends on the business or personal, what your circumstance is, you may want to buy some time until you see those rates start to go back down to save yourself money and put yourself in a better position. So those five C's, I need everyone to understand and maybe do some more research on them or ask questions, but that's the basis of credit evaluation, okay? And then where do we get this, this type of credit information from? Well, on the personal side, there are three major agencies. There's Equifax, there's Experian, there's TransUnion. Institutions use each one depending on who they choose for smaller loans, like other loans, personal loans, credit cards. But when it comes to bigger loans, like mortgages and commercial loans, we use all three. So it's, it would be smart of you to make sure that when you begin checking your credit reports and reviewing your credit reports based on this training and what you learn, that you make sure you, re you review all three credit reports so that you know what we are looking at when we're evaluating you from a credit standpoint. Um, on the business side, there, there, there are other agencies called Dun & Bradstreet, and then there's Equifax uh, Business, and there's Experience Business. Uh, for purposes of this training in the local area, on the business side, we don't utilize business credit reports too much. We, we more focus on, on, on your financial reports of a business, the health of your business, and the security that you provide in the event that you're, you're, you're requesting uh, money from an institution. Those are the important aspects of the business side of credit in this local market. And I believe there are two more sessions that coming up in the, in the following week that will dive into uh, business and the way we look at businesses and the way we analyze businesses so that you can have uh, for your information. I won't go too deep into business credit since there are two more sessions coming up, uh, but you'll hear me reference it uh, from time to time. So that, that's a brief overview of what credit is, uh, the characteristics of credit, the importance of understanding credit and managing it and where we get the information from, okay? Um, I won't get too much more in depth when it comes to scores. I may dive in a little bit more, but uh, on the personal side, but there are classes and, 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 and other uh, 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 institutions out there where if you like, I know for instance, the VI Housing Finance Authority, they do a more in-depth credit training when it comes to home ownership or mortgages. I actually participate in that training as well. Um, I, I do part of the class and they get more in-depth on the, on the personal side for you uh, first time, who may be first time home buyers or just first time getting involved in credit but understand the extreme importance of credit, not only for lending and borrowing purposes, but throughout your life for business purposes, for personal purposes, just on personal relationships. <laughs> I, know, I know there are some individuals, they, uh, you know, before they get into a relationship with someone, they want to know what's their credit history or the credit background. And I mentioned that only because to show the importance of how deep credit is in our lives uh, when we begin to utilize it or just in our day-to-day -day relationships with, 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 with your jobs, with your friends, with your family. Okay, so that's a quick overview around credit, what it is, how it works, what we look at. And from here on, I will uh, start to move forward through the presentation.
So, and, and, and try to explain, you see, we talk about some of these bullet points uh, already and explain as I go forward. And then I look forward to your question. So we start understanding personal and business credit. I believe I kind of explained there uh, a little bit of, 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 of what personal credit is and what business credit is, right? So just always remember personal credit is you, you do it every day. You buy stuff, you go, you use credit cards, you go for personal loans. Ensure that when you do those stuff and you get into contracts with these type of institutions, you always read your contracts uh, make sure you agree with them before you sign them and then comply with your contracts, your terms, your payments, because these are items that are always reported back to credit reports. And if I'm evaluating you, you come into the bank and I look at your credit report and I'm evaluating you for eligibility for a loan. And I see your score. You know, some people ask, so what's a score for me to be eligible? Well, you know, the general score, you will have 620, 650, 680. That's the bottom end of the score. And so you should be striving for the top end of the score, acceptable scores, because the only thing the bottom end of an acceptable score gets you is, yeah, you may be approved, but it's probably coming at a high cost with a lot of requirements and covenants. So when you begin to build your credit score and understand credit and do things to improve your credit status, you want to work towards the higher end from a personal standpoint. You want to start seeing 700, 800, because as, a, as, a, as an underwriter, when I look at someone's credit report and I look at their score, and if I see your score at 7, 800, right away, I am saying, okay, this is looking great. And I say great because your score alone tells me a lot about you as it relates to your personal financial management, to your ability to pay your debts and your willingness to pay your debts. Okay? So, you know, take good notes uh, and be ready to ask good questions because this is extremely important. Personal and Credit and business credit are distinct and separate in terms of what they represent and how they are used. Understanding the differences is essential for individuals managing their personal finances and for business owners seeking to establish and maintain a healthy financial standing for their company. For a business owner, understanding the difference between personal credit and business credit and why it makes sense to keep them separate can go a long way towards securing a financial future. And, and for you know the, the obvious reasons of keeping your personal and business, for those of you who have sole proprietorships or LLCs and have businesses, you realize how complex a business can get and the importance of separating your personal credit. Because both credit are going to be used whether you're applying for a personal uh, uh, facility or a business facility in this region, we use both credit uh, analysis and both personal and business aspect to determine your, your eligibility for the facility. So personal credit, this is based on an individual's credit history and is used for personal expenses like buying a home, a car, using credit cards or mortgages. Business credit, this is tied to a business entity and is used for related expenses such as purchasing inventory, equipment, or covering uh, uh, operational costs, what we call working capital. Personal credit profile, this is linked to an individual social security number. And that's why you would always see when you fill out an application, for just about any type of credit request, we would ask for your social security number because this is the tie between the bank, you, and the credit reporting agency. Uh, same on the business side, it is called an EIN number issued by IRS. Um, for sole proprietorships, uh, sometimes we use, we use our same social security number because of sole proprietorship is actually you 
doing business as the business you're running. But uh, for, for other purposes, you can apply for an EIN number to begin building and establishing your business credit. Uh, personal credit is, this is typically reported by consumer reporting agencies like Equifax, Experian, and TransUnion. We just talked about those. On the business side, uh, this is reported by business credit bureaus such as Dunn and Bradstreet, Experian Business, and Equifax Business. To report business credit with DNB, business, a business must register to obtain a free nine digit DNB Dunn's number. So on the business credit side, it you it's more you know it's more on the business to make sure that you are registered with these business reporting agencies and complying with their requirements to 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 build a business credit report. You know, as I mentioned earlier, we don't necessarily use these reports in 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 most cases in the local VI. But depending on how large your business is, where you want to do business, I think it's still a smart idea to build good business credit with these reports because it can only assist you in, 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 in your eligibility when requesting a, a loan, okay? Everyone can get a free copy of their personal credit report from the main three credit reporting agencies each year. And you know there are several mechanisms on the internet where you can go and access and get these reports, review it, ask questions. Not such a service for the business side. Okay, there are no consistent, consistently free business reports. Personal credit score. These are determined by FICO or Vantage score and range between 300 to 850. The higher the number, the more credit worthy the individual. A consumer credit score is a mathematical model that shows a consumer risk of being 90 days late on an account within the next 24 months. And I, sp I spoke in depth earlier about you know, what we look for in credit reports. And it's basically your habits, your patterns. Do you pay your bills? Do you pay them timely? Do you pay them down to zero? All these are, are, are things that, that strengthen your score or weakens it. You know, if, 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 if I keep seeing a credit report 30 days late and, 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 and we report information after 30 days, usually not earlier, different on the business side. But if I see an annual report 30 days late, 60 days late, you know, you can have a justifiable explanation because there's no one in this life that goes through life without hiccups, issues, but it's how you resolve them, it's how you manage them is the important aspect. You want to know that anytime you're going through difficult times and you're going to have a difficulty paying back a debt or resolving an account, raise your hand to whoever institution you're working with. Let them know what you're going through. Put the onus on them to assist you to get through this situation because it's a it's a relationship, it's a partnership when working with 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 institution and businesses and credit reporting agency. Business credit score, these are reported differently and very based on the credit reporting organization and index used. Equifax, Experience, and DNB all produce credit scores in addition to credit reports and usually range between 0 to 100. A business credit score is a mathematical model used to depict a business's risk of going 90 days late on an account within the next 12 months. Um, again, you know, we, we, these are not very popular with us here in, in, in this region uh, as we stay more focused I would say uh, we stay more focused on your financial reporting. And that, that's where what I would add here for small businesses, big businesses, in between businesses. If, if, if there's anything I would say that needs to strengthen in our businesses here in this area, it's, it's, it's your financial reporting and ensuring that management or ownership within a, a business understands clearly the importance of financial reporting 
and, and, and what the reports tell you as it relates to your business. Because these are the reports that we analyze in depth from a business uh, standpoint to tell us the health of your business, to tell us how your business is operating, to show us where money is needed in your business. We can actually look at your financial reports and see where money is needed versus where when you make a lot of money. I would recommend that you know management, accountants, owners get that verse with your financial reports so you get a, have a good understanding as to what you're bringing uh, to the bank or any lending institution of your choice. Personal credit protected by various consumer credit laws like the Fair Credit Reporting Act and the Equal Credit Opportunity Act. Personal credit banking, highly regulated industry, probably the second most regulated industry after, after medicine. Um, why? Because it's so impactful to a community. So with their all type of different rights protecting you to make sure you get a fair share of, of, of credit or, or opportunities to, to improve your life, to grow your business, so you're not out there on a limb by yourself, just so you know, there are a wealth of agencies that, that kind of guide us and tell us, uh, you know, how we should be uh, uh, the most fair and the most productive for our communities as far as banks go. Business credit, mm, not so much. Uh, business, you're getting into businesses. A lot of the savviness, a lot of the owners is going to be on you, the business owner. Uh, you, 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 you have some protection, but it's really on you to monitor, manage, understand, educate yourself so that you can guide your business in the right direction. Bankers will help you. We love to help our businesses understand what's going on so they could put themselves in a better position. Because doing good business loans for us, you know, is, is, is profitable for us. So we really like to be able to help, uh, especially new businesses, get on their feet and understand the important aspects of what we look for in order to assist you. And hopefully this program uh, will cover that for you. Uh, personal credit is tied to an individual. I think we talk about that. Uh, so the individual is personally responsible for any debts incurred, right? That's that should be without saying. You you borrow money, you have to pay it back. Not not a business. If it's a personal credit, you have to pay it back. Business credit is connected to the business's entity. The, so the business is typically responsible for its debt. So in the in the case of a business. Rather than, and I, it, I still will go to your personal credit report in a business request because I need to see the char character of the owner of the business. But more importantly, when I'm determining from a business standpoint, the ability to pay, to pay I am going to your financial reports. I am going to the numbers, your, your income statements and the numbers that tell me the money you're making, the expenses you're incurring, and how that is being managed, okay? I can't stress enough because of my experience in the, in the business area and the personal area, how important it is uh, for business people to be really educated and versed in their financial reports and the habits of the way their business operates. It will help you tremendously to determine when you go into an institution, what you're looking for, how much you're looking for, and be able to explain to the banker uh, 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 what your, your, your end goal is. Personal credit is based on an individual's credit history, personal income, debt to income ratio, and other personal financial factors. And, and, and again, um, you know, it's about paying your debt. When you talk about debt to income ratio, uh, and I don't know how much I can get into this, it's already 1137 and we're running out of time here, but your debt to income ratio is one of those important ratios we look at to determine if you are eligible from a capacity 
uh, or ability to pay. So quickly, you know, for those of you who want to quickly jot this down, uh, from a personal credit and a monthly payment standpoint, I would quickly take your gross income, whatever you're making, all your income, your gross, and if it's not monthly, you if you got it on an annual basis, you divide that by 12, that's your gross monthly income. You take all the bills that you're paying, your debts, and 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 your cards and your loans and everything you you add that up on a monthly basis you divide your debt into your personal income your total personal income you will come up with a ratio the standard in our uh, uh line of business is 43 percent 0.43 or 43 percent anytime that ratio is becoming close to that or higher on a personal standpoint you know you have to begin uh, to improve your situation. I'll leave that there for now. Business credit, uh, it's a, a different ratio, same type of scenario, a, a, a couple of little difference. We do it on an annual business. In the business side, it's called the debt service, service coverage ratio. Um, as I explained, uh, in the next couple of weeks, you'll get a little more in-depth as to what we look for on the business side. But it's basically that income to your expense to your your debt ratio to determine uh, where we uh, whether you're eligible and the number. This is not like hard and only. The general consensus around that is usually around one point one zero to one point three five, one point four. Sometimes people go as high as that. But just giving you a general uh, uh, a view of what we look for. Okay, late payments. Late payments are not reported to personal credit for 30 days usually. And, and I said that earlier that when we report, if we're going to report to our credit report uh, reporting agency, it's usually done 30 days or more. If you pay your bill within 30 days, you're usually not reported. However, you can be charged a late fee, right? Because most grace periods are not for 30 days. It's either, five, it's either five days or it's 15 days, like with mortgages. But we won't report you late unless it's 30 plus days or more. And that counts heavily against your credit score. So you always want to report that. Business, a little more uh, strict. We report you late from day one because this is a business. It's running every day. It's making money every day. Once you lay to make your monthly payment, we're going to get concerned and want to know why. Because as far as we see it, if we already got you on this pattern, we would want to know what changed your pattern that you could not make your, your, your payment timely. Does personal credit affect business credit? While the two are separate, there may be situations where your personal credit can impact your business credit. Absolutely. Especially for sole proprietorships where most times we ask you to guarantee your loan. And once you become a guarantor, then we have to look into your personal credit. Or even for business credit cards and so forth, your personal credit can impact your business credit analysis. So it's important that you, you make sure you manage both. Protect your personal assets in the case of an LLC, maintaining separate business and personal expenses is important. Mixing personal and business together can impact some of the protections that are in place. If your business is ever sued, personal assets can be at risk. Bill credit, keep your business separate from your personal credit so that you can give yourself a chance to build your credit score up. This could improve your chances of securing financing in the future. Make expense management easier. Keep your business and personal expenses separate so that you can manage your expenses much easier. Also, having kept everything separate will make everything much simpler during tax time. But manage both with the same vigor, eh? your personal credit is just as important as your business credit. Your business credit is just as important as your personal credit. So please, you know, give, give each one of them the time and the commitment it deserves 
uh, to, it would only it will only benefit you in the future. What is business credit used for? Your business credit can affect a variety of decisions, including the following: your eligibility or rates on loans, your business's insurance premiums, the net terms and credit limit you receive from vendors and suppliers, your ability to raise money from investors whether you qualify for contracts with other organizations. All these are, are very important uh, reasons why um, you should, you should, you sh why we use business credit and, and it's important for you to manage it. Most important reason is for securing a better future for yourself. A personal credit profile builds passively as the individual acquires personal debt. Business credit profile is not the same. A business owner must be intentional about building a, a, a business credit profile. You must understand, again, and the most important thing here is understanding your, your financial reports, your balance sheet, your income statement, and in some cases, your cash flow statement, and understanding how they work together and how they produce a strong, the strongest picture for you. Okay, I think that's the end of my presentation. Um, I hope it was informative. Um, I hope to see some of you in the future. Uh, like I said, get your savings and bank accounts established. So get yourselves down to a bank of your choice. Yeah, of course, I would recommend First Bank, but that's for you to determine which bank is best for you. And, and that should be your first step uh, if you're starting from ground zero. Establish your account. Pull your credit reports. Understand your financial reports. Those should be your first steps in beginning to build a strong credit profile for yourself and for your business. And at 11.45, I will stop here and uh, begin to take questions from uh, anyone who has. Mr. Amaro, there was a question about what was the fifth C in the five C's of credit? Uh, the fifth C is condition. So let me make sure I name them. There was character, there's capacity, there's uh, capital, there's collateral, and then the fifth C is condition, right? Understanding your environment, understanding where we are as far as inflation. Uh, every so often you hear on the news, the, the Fed say, I'm raising rates, which means your mortgage rates are going up, your business rates are going up. And you kind of want to monitor those type of things. Not only that, how is the industry for your job? Are you stable? Those are things that we look at to, to, to determine your eligibility. And so that's what the fifth C is all about. Okay, great. Uh, can you put, if anybody else has any questions, you can put them in the chat. And while you're putting your questions in the chat, I will give you guys some additional information. Okay, the VISBDC has so much more in store for the USVI small business community. Visit our website at www.visbdc.org. Download the VISBDC app on your mobile device from the appropriate app store. Like and follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Google My Business, and subscribe to the VISBDC YouTube channel. So when new uploads are made, you and um, YouTube channel, new uploads of us and on-demand webinars. Okay, now here's a preview of our upcoming trainings. On April the 19th, the Financial Literacy Series continues with establishing and repairing credit that's being uh, put on by First Bank VI. On the 24th, it's Small Business Accounting 101 that's being done by Merchants Commercial Bank. And on April the 26th is the fundamentals of business credit. Okay, so those those are some of the seminars we have coming up in the month of April for our financial literacy month.
Do we have any more questions for Mr. Amaro? Okay, Mr. Amaro, our audience seems to be pretty quiet. You covered a lot of information. But one question, why you say that in the territory, we focus more on the financial statements for business than the business credit? Why is yes. that? Yes, it's, it's not a tool that we use. That's more for the businesses to kind of communicate with those agencies. It doesn't work like a consumer reporting agency. So that's more uh, for the business. It's, it's, it's like adding um, an extra layer of credibility to yourself that you're reporting your business to these agencies and they're able to have an established profile for you. So um, uh, here in these islands, we focus more. And so, you know, for a lot of uh, banks or institutions in the, in, in, in the mainland, you know, they can pretty much look at that report if you're in it and, and kind of determine a capacity and an eligibility for you. For us, not so much. We more focus on your collateral and security as a determinant for your eligibility. And, and that's why we, we, not that we don't, but it's not one of the stronger tools we use for determining uh, your qualification from a business standpoint. Okay, great. Now, for the businesses that are doing business with vendors in the state, is it a good idea for them to establish their business credit report? Yes, I would absolutely encourage you to do so. It only strengthen, uh, strengthens your request. Uh, but keep in mind, you know, although there are general standards and parameters and policies, every lending institution has their uh, particular or specific way of doing things. And that's why, as I, as I mentioned earlier, it's extremely important that you build relationships with your lending institution, with your bank. Get in there, open an account, get to know who they are, and, be, and, and let them know who you are in order to begin to build your profiles in a positive way. Should individuals work in building those banking relationships with the banks just like the businesses? Yes. Absolutely, because on the in on the consumer side, you have to you have to have uh, capital. We talk about one of the C's of credit. Uh, we have to see that you have some stability, and 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 by and the way you do that is by having a, a savings accounts, checking accounts, CDs, that sort of stuff. So absolutely get into a, a build your relationship with a lending institution, find out the best products they have for you, make sure it works on your behalf and, 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 and make the right choices. Okay, great. Does anyone else have any questions for Mr. Amaro? You can raise your hand and I can unmute you. Or you can put your question in the chat. All right. Yeah. Raise your hand. Don't be afraid. Now is the time to ask. But I'm sure, and if, if for a lot of you, uh, you're just getting started, I'm sure I will see you in the future. Um, I've, I've been doing these trainings more on the consumer side around uh, the island. And uh, maybe many of you who are in this have heard me before in, in, in those other areas. So if you don't know now, if you don't have the questions now, you know, don't be afraid to reach out to your your favorite banker, I should say. Okay, we do have another question. It says, how soon after a new business is open should you apply for a business credit card? Usually the standard, the normal standard, both I believe both on both sides, personal and 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 business is two years of operation or employment um when it comes to credit cards there are some leniency or exceptions if you will that can happen maybe you plan to put on cash as security 
that may create an exception for that policy. But, but, but as a general uh, rule of thumb, the norm is that we usually uh, like to see at least two years of operation. A business can get a secured credit card? Uh, you would have to check to your uh, 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 individual institution. Some do, some don't. A good question. Does First Bank do secure credit cards for businesses? Um, uh, yes, we do. I'm going to say we do. There, I know there has been some, there, there might be some extra uh, uh, requirements, but we do. We do. Great. Okay. Last chance for last questions in the chat or raise your hand. Okay, Mr. Amaro. Once again, I would like to encourage uh, you to take a few minutes uh, after the training to fill out the survey. That's the people in attendance. And that lets us know how we are doing. Thank you for your time and attendance on behalf of the entire VISBDC network. And we look forward to seeing folks next week. Thank you very Absolutely. much. And thank you. Thank you for being there. And thank you for inviting me. I hope I hope it helped uh, whoever is there. Thank you. Thank you. Absolutely.